guys, welcome along to a brand new episode of Rural New Zealand. I'm your host, Gordon Findlater. Well, on this show, we pay a visit to Iron Man 4x4 and we check out a new application designed to aid with health and safety around the farm. But first up tonight, we're off to Heartland Chips. Fascinating is the process of how the Heartland Chip makes its way out of the ground all the way to on the supermarket shelf. We went to have a look. Welcome to Fullgate Farms, the home of Heartland Potato Chips. The farm was named over 80 years ago when a previous landowner discovered many farm gates on the property hanging on their hinges, hence Fullgate. After getting into potato growing as an 18-year-old, Raymond Bowen started his own operation in the farm back in the mid-70s. Married in 73 and then we moved out to this farm now. We didn't move very far, moved about 10k off a dairy farm that my father had and came up here in 75. Fish and chip was the first contract I had in Timaru and then I started to get into processing, process growing with wattis back in those days early days and then Bluebird. After supplying the Bluebird factory just outside of Timaru for a number of years, the factory shut up shop to move their operation north. This wasn't to be the last time the factory would make potato chips though, with Raymond taking a huge risk to try and accomplish a lifelong dream. Well I've always would have liked to take what we grow to the market and process them in our own factory but at that stage it wasn't, we couldn't do it. We were busy supplying another crisping factory at that stage and it was only until they decided to close the one that I was supplying in, um, in 2008 and shut the doors early 2009 that I thought well this is my chance if I never could ever go is, is now and that's how it started. Huge amount of risk. We're probably going to, you know, put potato, our brand into a, probably a saturated market with two market leaders there. So we knew it wasn't going to be easy. So we had to try and make the job better and have a few point of differences. But yeah, it was quite. It was a big thing to do, really, when you look back. Buying the old Bluebird premises probably was the easiest part. But once we'd ordered the gear from overseas, or we knew it had to work so we had to give it a bit of thought from then on and make sure that we did everything right. Since Raymond and wife Adrian moved to the farm, it's since become very much a family fuelled operation. Son James lives on the farm while daughter Charlotte is now the general manager of Heartland Chips. Right from the word go when we floated the idea it was a family decision around the table really. You know, whether they would be interested because you know, we want somebody to carry it on and they'd be interested at the time of when we started it. So, yeah, so I'm very, very pleased that they are. Only in operation for a few years, Heartland were rewarded for leaping into a new challenge, taking out the South Island Farmer of the Year Award in 2011. We were pretty chuffed to get that and I think it was because of innovation with the Developing Heartland potato chips it would have certainly helped us get that, but yeah, as a family we're very pleased. Alright, now that we've learnt a bit about the history of Heartland, let's see just exactly how a spud from Fullgate Farms ends up as a chip in your shopping trolley. So we'll start planting the early ones in the end of August, and then we'll start the main plant in September, and that'll go through till about first week in November usually, but that's weather dependent. Um, and then irrigation, fertiliser, monitoring of the crops through until we start harvest. We'll start harvesting the early ones um, first week of January and we'll supply the factory daily through until the end of May. But end of March we'll start storage and um, get them tucked away so we can supply right through to Christmas. We caught some of the team in action just across the road from the main family home with one of the last digs of the season taking place. Once the harvester is loaded up, these spuds are put onto the truck. 
It's then about a half an hour drive to the factory in Washdyke. When they come in, they obviously come with the skins on, and so they go through a brush peeler and um, the skin's removed. From there they go through um, where they're cut into their shape, whether it's crinkle cut or a flat cut, they're the two that we do at the moment. Um, they're then hot washed and then straight into the fryer. So they're in the fryer for about three and a half minutes. And then they go to the fancy room of the sorting room where the, all the defects are taken out because we don't want brown ones or green ones in our packets. Um, and then they go to the flavour drum where they're flavoured with what flavour we're doing for that day. Smells like chickens on the menu today. Once they've been flavoured, it's then into the packets before being boxed up and ready for shipment. Now, you might be wondering exactly how long this process takes. And once they get dropped here, um, it takes roughly eight minutes from the actual potato to a pa packet of potato chips. A pretty slick, very localised operation. Something the Bowens can take pride in. The South Island, that's where we started for a start. And the consumer today, I think, wants to know who's growing the potato and who owns the manufacturing um, of the chip or any food really. And um, yeah, we've got a, a story that goes from the paddock to the to the packet. So I think consumers uh, might like to read what's on the back of the packet now. So just a few hundred metres that way, it's where we were three or four hours ago had the dig happening. Since then, we've been down to the factory. We saw that load into the factory. It was in there for all of about eight minutes. Ends up in here. Here's our delicious chicken chips, which we saw being made today. And now, back down here. They were only out of the ground a few hours ago. Now into my mouth. Mmm. Now that's fresh. And as you can imagine, that pack of chips didn't make it back to Christchurch in one piece. We'll stay with us after the break where we catch up with Vince from Iron Man 4x4. Welcome back to rural New Zealand. Well, I think it's fair to say that winter has finally arrived. With winter, of course, comes mud. We went down to Iron Man 4x4 to see what you need for the upcoming off-roading season. All right, Vince, I guess it's sort of ironic. We just, on the way in here, saw a crash outside between a couple of four-wheel drives. Could have done with uh, some of these bull bars that we're looking at. Absolutely, yeah. No, there's... Um a pretty big demand these days for the bull bars, one of our biggest biggest selling products. So we uh, we have a few in the range and uh, all for the four-wheel drive vehicles obviously. So um, we start off with what we call our commercial one. Um, so it's a, a three mil black powder coated steel one. It's um, fully winch and airbag compatible like all the, all the bull bars in our range. So we basically have um, three starting with, that, with the baseline one. Uh, and the deluxe bar, which is the next one up, and that has a set of fog lights in it. Again, it's fully winch and airbag compatible. And then the top of the line is our protector bar, which is a polished stainless steel loop on the top with the, with the built-in fog lights and things. So all our bars have high lift jack slots in them, um, spotlight mounting points, and as I say, they uh, all have access for, for winch and uh, winch compatible as well. Obviously you'd hope it doesn't have to, but I'd imagine something like that can take a bit of a pounding. Absolutely, yeah. No, we've certainly had some very good cases in Australia where, um, you know, some pretty high speed crashes and uh, people have come out pretty unscathed from having a, an extra bit of protection on their ear. They certainly offer a lot more protection, plus um, a lot better um, approach and departure angles on your vehicle as well. So we take the existing bumpers off and basically put these bars on so you end up taking away all those plastics which are hanging quite low and put uh, this heavy duty steel on it which uh, gives you a bit more off-road ability as well. You talked about winch compatible, that's what we're yeah. talking about here as well. Absolutely, so this is actually our uh, Ironman uh, winch mounting bracket and they're specific for each vehicle. Um, 
So what they are is basically we take your old bumper off and then we um, put this directly onto the chassis. So you've got your mounting points on the chassis and then we put this whole cross member in there. So this is where we would bolt a winch to if you were uh, wanting a winch on your vehicle. And then we put the bolt the bar onto this. So effectively, it's a whole new cross member in the chassis. And it's also um, means that when you are winching, you're winching back to a very strong point. You're not winching onto the wall bar. So very strong um, heavy duty system. You guys have a bit of a selection of winches as well. If we just pop on over here, yeah, so we've got uh, a couple in our range here, so we do, we do two, two sizes, we do a, a 12,000 pound and a 9,500 pound, so uh, we're doing them with steel rope or synthetic rope, um, a lot of them are going to this new synthetic rope, which is a, a very lightweight, um, easy to handle rope, so it takes about 15 kilos out of your winch, so um, really nice and easy to handle. You got a remote you're going to show off for us? Yeah, so we have... Um, all our winches come with a, a plug-in remote as well as a wireless remote, so the beauty of this is you can either just plug that into your front of your winch controller, yep. or you can um, turn it on and operate it remotely. So if you're on your own and you're um, trying to hook it onto a tree but you need a bit more winch rope, you can uh, just do that with the... Uh, so if you walk into uh, the new old yeah, meters. Exactly, so you can do that all yourself. So really great little feature, or you can be standing way back operating your winch, while, so it's all done remotely. So a very neat little feature and they've all got a, a three-year uh, warranty and they're also um, one of the only winches on the market with a, um, a fully sealed motor and a breather on them so they're the most waterproof on the market so if you do do a lot of water work or river crossings they are very dry in that respect. Obviously another big part of four-wheel driving is tyres and suspension yeah. just around the corner let's go and have a look. All right. All right, but it's obviously suspension. It's uh, not always a case of one kit doing the one job. It's uh, different types, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. So uh, again, one of our biggest products is, is suspension upgrades we do for four-wheel drive vehicles. So we have a range of um, shock absorbers as well as different springs. So a, a big seller for us is upgrading them for heavier capabilities. So contractors and farmers who actually want to carry a bit extra weight. Um, and also an increase in height and travel, so you actually get better off-road ability. So um, the likes of this one here is a, is a nitro gas. It's a it's a heavy-duty shock absorber. The next one up is what we call a foam cell, so that's an extra heavy duty. And then we do a, a foam cell pro, which is actually the heaviest um, production shock absorber on the market. So in terms of shock absorbers, we can take you from a very average what the vehicle comes out with right up to a very heavy-duty strong shock absorber. So. Um, they're all available. Yeah. Coming into winter, things are getting pretty muddy. You're going to need a tyre that's going to do the job as well. Absolutely, yeah. So we do uh, a range of tyres, right from uh, normal car tyres up to four-wheel drive and tractor tyres, but um, our specialty is definitely four-wheel drive tyres. We, we have a, a full range from um, what we call a, a standard on-road tyre to mid-range all-terrain tyres, and then right up to very serious aggressive mud tyres. So there's a, a full range available, um, and we have a full fitting service here as well, so we can uh, supply and fit uh, the full range of tyres. Yeah, I was about to say, once you've figured out what you want, you guys can obviously put it on and it's not just this but anything you purchase from here you guys are able to fit? That's right we have uh, a full workshop facility so we have uh, a couple of guys in the, in the workshop who are fitting all the time so whether it's a bull bar or a suspension kit or a set of tyres or a snorkel we can uh, fit it all no problem. Right, let's go and check it out. Okay. Uh, Vince, so you've obviously got all the gear in the workshop here to uh, to kit us out, ready to go off-road. Absolutely, yep. Now we've got the full workshop facilities here, so the hoist where we do all the suspension work, uh, fitting all the ball bars, got tyre machines and everything in the corner, so yeah, we've got the, uh, the full workshop facilities here. One-stop shop? One-stop shop for everything. Well, after the break, we check out an application designed for farmers. That's next on Rural New Zealand. Welcome back to Rural New Zealand. While new health and safety legislation brought in by the government means that risk management is more important than ever. While this may be causing headaches for some, 
one company have seized the initiative, creating a user-friendly, paperwork-free means of managing on-farm health and safety. Farmers are obliged to make people aware of the risks on the farm, you know, their visitors and also their team. So we just wanted to make it really, really easy for people um, to have a, you know, to have the information that they needed available to them. And so making it easy meant that it had to be mobile. So we've put a health and safety system uh, on a mobile app, but also on a web-based system. We had paper-based systems available that on farms just really aren't fit for purpose. It's sort of in an environment that's weird and dirty and um, you know, covers a large area, paper just wasn't working so we decided that we'd um, build something that was more fit for purpose for farmers. And build they did. Onside teamed up with Jade Software to get their concept off the ground which has resulted in a user-friendly means to managing health and safety. We're farmers, uh, we're not technology developers so we had to find a, a really cool technology partner and so we used uh, Jade software based in Christchurch. We've looked at it through farmer's eyes and then they've looked at it through um, user, user experience, you know, for the user experience and then also from the cool technology. And I think the feedback we've had from farmers is that it is working really well, it's really simple. Um, and even people that aren't tech savvy have been able to pick it up and use it, which is, and we've had some great feedback. So how exactly can you set up your farm for on-site? Well, as it turns out, it's pretty easy. So OnSite has a virtual boundary which um, tells the app when you arrive, um, you know, that you've arrived and that you, to download the risks and have a look at um, the risks on the farm. So to set up a, your, your virtual boundary, all you need to do in, is put in the physical address of the property. So for here it's 1706 Hoskins Road, Pui. Um, and then because it uses a Google map, it knows where you are. So you just click on the property. There we are. And it's done. Already knows. Already knows the. It has the all the. It has all the Lynn's titles in the background in New Zealand. So all you need to do is click on the on the farm. If you've got more than one title, you just keep clicking, and then you just join them up, and it's done. Almost sounds too easy. So I thought I'd test it out for myself. So here we are. Just stepped onto the farm. All I have to do is pull out my phone. Go to the app. Here we are. Purlingham, there's the gate, you can see it, I've just walked through it. Then all I need to do is sign in, which I can do on my phone, and it will show me any risks. Here we go, this is where I am. There's the building renovations going on, so don't trip. And once I've looked through all of these, the farm owner will get a notification saying, I've seen all the risks, so they're happy. When someone comes to, the, to your farm and they sign in, you're alerted that they've arrived, you've got all their information, uh, you know how long they've been there. Farmers love that, they love to know who's on their farm, how long they've been there, and if you, the person doesn't sign in, it'll also alert the farmer to, you know, to say that they, they're on the farm and haven't signed in, so then they can give them a call and say, hey, you know, just make sure that they're aware of the risks on the farm. It's not just a handy tool for the farm owner to see who's on site either, but also has all of the info that anyone coming onto the farm requires in an emergency. In my previous role as a farmer, I often, you know, when a contractor arrived, you knew who you contacted to organise the person to come, but you didn't know who the person that was actually on the farm was. So when they arrive, you have all their contact details, so you can just, it's a, gr a great communication tool as well. And once you're on site and signed in, any potential risk you spot on the property can be easily referred to the owner. Take this pond for example. And on site you just uh, click the report risk or incident button and it brings up uh, you know, a, a way to do that and so you want to report a new risk. Um, so you choose a category, so this one's probably mobile plant and equipment because if a fur truck was in here or a tractor and they were you know, moving along and couldn't see it and ended up in there, they're just going to get stuck and... Yeah, you're uh, probably not getting out of there. They're not getting out of there, so you just want to make them aware of it. So click the risk, take a photo so that they know what they're looking at. Um, and then you type a short summary of the risk. So pond. A little bit of safety information, so you say stay clear when driving equipment. Yep. Um, and then you just drop it on the map. So you bring it brings up the, the map of of the on the 
with the um, satellite image. Yep, that shows where we are. Save, report the risk. And that goes directly to the farm owner. Goes directly to the farm owner. So now they review it, and if they think that it uh, should be on the risk register, they'll add it, and then they can edit details, and they might want to put a fence around here or something. It's really easy to set up, and you know, it's free for their contractors to get started. There's a casual user uh, model where when a farmer arrives at the farm, they can download the app and get going in less than a minute. That means that they have the whole farm's health and safety plan in, in the palm of their hand. Um, so, you know, the barriers are low to get going, it's easy to set up, it takes less than a minute. To set up a risk register, like a fit for purpose risk register, takes, you probably get one going in 10 minutes and then it's just living and breathing it. It just, you know, it, it evolves over time as things happen. Very cool technology indeed, and definitely a lot easier than sorting through a bunch of paperwork. Well guys, it's goodbye from me on Rural New Zealand. Your regular host, Scotty Bamford, will be back soon though to bring you some fresh episodes. If you want to keep up to date with when we'll be back, do make sure you like us on Facebook. Just search Rural NZ. Well guys, it's been an absolute pleasure bringing you the show over the past eight weeks. And we'll leave you now with some of our favourite highlights throughout the season. In terms of, of continuing <laughs> yeah, <I'll> audio. <laughs> ben, go away. Ben, go away. <laughs> Where does the milk come from, Hazel? Cows. Yeah. And they come out, no, no, I tell do poo. <laughs> Cows do do poo, yeah. Or ducks. Part of, oh. Cows do yeah, on the grass. Right. Yeah. Oh, on the grass. Yeah, I'm sure that was grass. Hey guys, make sure you tune in. Blah, tune. Chill it or just straight down? Hey, we don't want Oh, 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 <laughs> it's not that bad, is it? That's feral. <laughs> oh, no. so eat it. Just give it a go, go. Just chew it. Chew it. Oh, 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 oh, oh. Just swallow it. She's a growing product. Um, but uh, the interesting thing. But oh, sorry, guys. It's just. Oh. Oh. Yeah, we have a winner, and it's all on camera. Oh. Interested in doing this. Um, if anyone, sorry, that's my dog. If anyone's interested in... <laughs> there you go. That's how you make a good stable fence, rural New Zealand style. I think you guys will be taking the jobs, not me. Uh, and after a long day out in the water, it was... On tonight's show, we meet a 50-50 share milker who's just learned how to run the books. One young man shows us how he's thundering, has turned their thundering. Thundering! <laughs>